And welcome back to Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Today we've got more Stratasys acquisitions, carbon fiber, ankle implants, 3D printed titanium, and a lot more. So first off, if you're in the industrial space, you might want to check out ASME 2021, which is happening March 3rd and 4th next week. Use the link in the description to register for a free ticket, courtesy of our friends over at Intamsis. Normally it's 50 bucks, but it should be a great learning experience if you're in aerospace. So definitely go check that out, link below. And right on into investor news. Today we've got Stratasys doubling down on SLA, buying industrial SLA machine maker RPS. Now after acquiring Origin last month, this really shouldn't come as a surprise. They're definitely getting into the SLA market and they're going hard. Now RPS systems are open resin systems that use laser technology for detailed features and low variability. Now along with the good accuracy, the RPS Neo printers actually feature a relatively small footprint for their 800 by 800 by 600 millimeter print size. That is a large volume printer. We developed the Neo line to raise the industry standard for the next generation of large frame industrial stereolithography 3D printers. I'm looking forward to continuing to develop this best in class technology with the Stratasys team as we bring our products to a broad and global audience, said David Story, the director over at RPS. Now, one already happy RPS customer is British Formula One racing team, Williams Racing, which recently acquired several of their Neo 800 3D printers. Now, by adding RPS's complementary SLA technology to its own line, Stratasys is now going to be able to cover the entire product life cycle, all the way from concept modeling, all the way to 3D printed end use parts. Now, interestingly, Stratasys stock dropped around 11% after this announcement, in contrast to the fact that the stock steadily grew all the way to 54.37 per share after the Origin acquisition, its highest point since the 2014 3D printing stock bubble. We'll have to see where it goes. Now, Stratasys has also announced their first carbon fiber 3D printing filament for the F123 series. Now, if you're not familiar with the F series, they're basically Stratasys' lower cost systems mostly focused around ABS and other basic plastics. Now, while they've had carbon fiber reinforced filament in their industrial lineup in the Fortis, this is actually a first on their smaller machines. Now, the new filament is called ABS-CF10, based on ABS, with 10% chopped carbon fiber by weight. Now, the carbon fiber, they say, uh, makes it 15% stronger and 50% stiffer. So 1515 stronger and 50% stiffer than their standard ABS filament. So Stratasys builds it as a compelling alternative to metal parts. As we've been saying this whole time about the carbon infused filaments that we sell in our store, it is a heck of a thing. We've been doing this for a long time now. So if you're considering carbon infused filaments, definitely give us a call. Nylon, ABS, Peak, you name it, we pretty much have it and the systems and tools to make it easy for you without costing an arm and a leg. Speaking of arms and legs, you should totally take that virtual arm and smash that like button uh, and uh, subscribe because it helps us out a lot on the YouTube algorithm, helping us show this video to more people interested in 3D printing and we really, really do appreciate it. Uh, next, we've got the first 3D printed ankle implant. Now this device is described by the FDA as the first in world and first of its kind implant to replace the TELUS. Now the talus is the bone in the ankle that joins the leg to the foot. As the name suggests, the patient-specific talus spacer is tailored to each patient based off their computed tomography data. The damaged talus can then be replaced with a 3D printed cobalt chromium replacement that perfectly fits the patient's anatomy. The device has actually been used in 31 patients and 32 actual replacement surgeries, including one individual had both ankle bones replaced. Imagine that, walking around on two 3D printed ankles. Gosh, it's crazy. Now, three years after all these operations, patients said that the pain reduced from moderate or severe before surgery to mild afterwards, which with also improved range of motion. Now, only three individuals required further surgery, mostly to address pain and scarring at the surgery site. So now that 3D printed hip implants are manufactured with repeatability and proper quality control, the next frontier for medical 3D printing is to tackle the ankle. The first total talus replacement surgery using a 3D printed part actually occurred in 2018 and 3D Systems is now pioneering the use of 3D printed patient specific surgical guides for ankles. Incredible work happening in surgery and medical. Next, we've got AI and machine learning. 
Machine Learning Solutions company Intelligence announced a collaboration with engineering simulation leader Ansys to accelerate the development of reliable and repeatable additive manufacturing processes. The integration of machine learning methods is expected to accelerate all of additive manufacturing workflows and their first commercially available product, the trademarked Alchemite, is a deep learning platform that offers accurate models for predicting missing values, finding errors, and optimizing target properties. And it also enables users to break through data analysis bottlenecks, reducing the amount of time and money spent on research and supporting better, faster decision making. Now, we keep saying it here, and I talk to people on a weekly, weekly basis, as soon as we get machine learning and AI into 3D printers fully integrated, it's gonna be a complete game changer. No more tuning, it'll do it for you. I can only see where this is gonna go over the next five years, probably a good investment idea. Next, we've got Enisoprint launching the Aura 2.1 slicer with premium continuous fiber 3D printing features. Now, I just wanted to get this in here because most people already know Desktop Metal and Mark Force for their continuous fiber desktop printers, but has anybody heard of an isoprint? They actually do the exact same thing overseas. Now, the new and improved Aura 2.1 Premium is the driving force behind the company's flagship Composer 3D printer, enabling users to customize and integrate fiber reinforcements into polymer-based composite components. You can actually download the latest version for Windows and give it a whirl. But next, we've got in the world of high-end metal 3D printing, we've got Siaki's EBAM printers printing over 12,000 pounds of titanium in 2020. Yeah, 12 thousand pounds. That's a lot of titanium by volume. Now, despite all the supply chain disruptions caused by COVID-19, the company still managed to overhaul records set in previous years thanks to the high deposition rate of its machines. Now, Siaki first launched the EBAM technology as a service, but interest began to pick up back in 2014, and it released its first turnkey system, targeting clients mostly in the nuclear, aerospace, and defense sectors. Now, essentially, EBAM is a directed energy deposition, or DED, process in which an electron beam gun deposits a wire feedstock layer by layer until the part reaches near net shape, and then it's machined down to the final form. Now, Siaki's large format EBAM 3D printers are reportedly able to fabricate parts up to 19 feet in length. Uh, in addition to the colossal size of their systems, the company also prides itself on having one of the industry's fastest deposition rates. Now, during testing, early machines were quoted around 15 pounds an hour, but its gross rate is now around 25 pounds of metal per hour, uh, which somewhat explains how they reached these latest milestones. Very good. Now, since we're on the topic of titanium, let's talk a little bit about space. We've got 3D printed thrusters, which are going to be used for NASA's first voyage to the moon's south pole. We've got Agile Space Industries, a company known for its additively manufactured propulsion technologies, has been selected by Astrobotics Griffin Mission 1 team to develop 3D printed thrusters and axial engines for the Griffin Lunar Lander. Now, the Griffin Lunar Lander will be used by NASA to deliver the Viper, or Volatines Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, to the moon's south pole in 2023. Jeffrey Max, the co-founder and CEO, says, In an industry like aerospace, where new technology developments are expected to take years, the speed at which Agile develops propulsion solutions is opening up missions and opportunities that were previously unachievable. The foundation for this unprecedented agility is our unique combination of propulsion engineering, additive manufacturing, or 3D alloy printing, and integrated testing facilities and expertise. You get it all in under one house and you can do things a lot faster, I'll say. In other space-related aerospace news, we've got Airbus mass 3D printing waveguide parts for their latest Eutelsat satellites. Now, by 3D printing the radio frequency parts, including multi-waveguide blocks and switch assembly networks, Airbus was able to reduce the lead time and cost of their entire assembly. Once fitted to Eutelsat's Hotbird 13F and 13G satellites, the parts will effectively reinforce the firm's broadcasting services in Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. Now, to quote, this is recognized as the first large-scale deployment of RF products using the ALM, or Additive Layer Manufacturing, process, according to Gareth Penlington, Hotbird payload manager over at Airbus. Now, among other things, Airbus has set its sights even higher, targeting orbital space satellite applications of its technologies. Now, by collaborating with 3D Systems, for example, the company is 
previously fabricated, redesigned RF filters for relay antennas, improving their surface topology while reducing their weight and expense in the process. Using 3D printing to create optimized satellite parts is becoming an increasingly common application of the technology, and several firms, even working with our very own print service here at Vision Miner, have done so in the last few months alone. There has been no slowdown in the race to space. Anyway, if you haven't already, go check out our new material videos. We go in depth and give total breakdowns of all the high performance FDM materials that we carry and supply here at visionminer.com. And if you're interested, we can get you the machines and tools required to use them in your business. That's all we do here at Vision Miner. So hit that like and subscribe, have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.